Um, yeah, I'm Paul Reed, Media and Innovation Lab of Media Technology Services for Viacom International Media Networks um, by an agency called Lullabot, uh, based in the States, uh, running on Drupal 4.7. Um, the, probably the main feature about it uh, was uh, MTV Flux, which is, um, it was, uh, I think, billed as the next MySpace or something at the time, which uh, was quite fateful. Uh, and it suffered the same fate as well, it died uh, not long afterwards. Um, but it was quite uh, innovative for its time. Um, it was, so it was a social network, but um, everything kind of plugged into the broadcast system as well. So we had user-generated content that was feeding into our broadcast stream, powering uh, one of our channels, which is also called MTV Flux. Um, and this, you know, this was taking um, sort of user uploaded videos, uh, pictures, uh, they could vote on charts and that would sort of change uh, the data that was being fed into the playout system. Um, we sat with that for a while. Um, we had quite a few performance issues with it early on. Uh, Drupal wasn't uh, really that scalable back then. Um, we did patch it quite heavily and uh, a lot of the performance patches that we um, contributed then, I think, uh, went into the core for Drupal 5. Um, so it kind of took us quite a while to actually benefit from those patches that went into core. Um, <clears throat> around about 2008, um, you know, the old site was uh, looking a bit ragged, uh, banging around the edges. Um, so we, uh, uh, I'd actually only just joined the company in 2007, so I was completely new to Drupal. Um, coming from a sort of uh, proprietary development background. So uh, I mostly worked for media companies that built everything in-house um, and didn't, use his, didn't really use anyone else's code. So we did some evaluation around 2008, uh, started looking at a few other platforms, um, and then went out to Drupal Con Boston in 2008. And sort of met up with the community again and that was that was the point where we sort of started sort of reconnecting with a lot of the Drupal community and um, started getting a better vision of where Drupal was heading um, and we realised that you know we're sort of pretty much heading in the same direction so we stuck on uh, Drupal. Um, this Drupal 5 site was so this was built entirely in-house with a team of about two or three developers um, and I think it, uh, overall sort of build time was about five, five six months um, in between supporting the current site and other parts of the business. So uh, ended up launching in 2009. Uh, and it's still running today, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, uh, also in 2009, uh, so, so actually rewinding a little bit, uh, it was slightly bad timing with the, with the point that we started the point where we really had to start building uh, the new site was just around the time that Drupal 6 was being released. Um, and when Drupal 6 was released, it wasn't really usable without things like views and CCK and various other con uh, contributed modules that weren't up to speed yet. So we went ahead on Drupal 5. And then just around the time we launched, um, Drupal 6 started becoming usable. So hot off the hills in 2009, we had a, a new channel launch uh, called Viva. Um, this was built again internally on Drupal 6. Um, I think for the Drupal 5 build we probably spent around 50% of our time um, working on the back end of Drupal, <coughs> improving uh, editorial workflow tools that were kind of lacking uh, in the platform back then. So it was quite a relief really in you know, Drupal 6 we discovered that a lot of the stuff that we'd had to custom build before uh, was already being provided by core or contra modules. Um, so the, the build time for this was probably around two or three months, um, which is obviously a vast improvement. Um, the, f the focus really for us as a business as well, we kind of, we, we stopped pretending that we were going to be uh, the next MySpace, or certainly we did in the UK. Other parts of the business may have uh, liked to think that they were going to continue doing that. Um, that's actually much already. <laughs> um, 
Uh, so we focused really more on, on you know, our, our core audience and what they expected from one of our websites. And I mean, we're a broadcaster, we, we create uh, content, so they want to consume our content. So uh, the new site was much more sort of focused around video and um, yes, 2010, um, we started uh, moving out into other parts of, you know, not just supporting websites anymore. Uh, we rolled out a couple of apps, actually, I think the MTV News app on the right was launched in 2010, the base chart app came a little bit later. Um, both of these obviously need data. Uh, these are fed by services running on Drupal 6. Uh, it's able to support XMLP list feeds, so that could, they can be read by uh, natively by iOS. Um, so that kind of... Uh, 2011, we, we launched MTV OD. Uh, we actually started building this early 2010. Uh, this took us about a year to build. Um, it was... Uh, so MTV OD um, is a video on demand platform. It's kind of sort of catch-up TV, but not really, because we haven't quite got our window strategy sorted out yet. But um, because of our uh, carriage deals and everything, we can't give away our content for free because obviously we're subscribing <coughs> channels and everything. So um, we did have uh, an overwhelming demand for people to watch, be able to watch our content online. So the only platform is a subscription-based platform. Um, it's all built on Drupal 6. Um, we do uh, SMS billing. Uh, and PayPal for subscriptions there. So we did a lot, a lot of work um, building sort of custom payment gateways and things like that. Um, <clears throat> um, on this one, we spent a lot of time really sort of working to address um, performance issues that we were still seeing um, with authenticated users. Uh, so a lot of our sites by this point were pretty much all anonymous users. Um, anonymous users means you can cache the same content for everyone and it doesn't change. Uh, obviously, with a subscription-based site, uh, everyone's session is unique. Um, everyone has their own <coughs> subscription information and details about what they've watched, what they're allowed to watch, uh, how long they've got left to watch it, etc. Um, so here we really worked heavily on um, partial page caching. Um, parts of it using Ajax to call in authenticated session data. Um, other parts are using Edside includes to cache parts of the site and then just return the unique stuff for that authenticated user. Also in 2011, I'm not sure if this is quite clear, it's sort of quite a any picture that I took on my phone. Um, so we started dabbling again with uh, bits of kit from the broadcast team. Um, I think our, our team is sort of probably best described really as a team of tinkerers. And we like kind of just digging around and taking things apart and seeing what happens if you plug that into that. Um, and so we discovered that it was actually quite easy for us to start pushing data into our broadcast stream. So. Whereas previously, you'd have a team of uh, uh, broadcast, well, a broadcast production team uh, building out shows like this, which is music IQ, and it has the pop-ups about, you know, these are interesting facts about Brian Adams. Um, previously, you'd have a team of graphic designers building that and assembling the whole thing together. What we discovered is that we could provide data, again, via services running on Drupal 6, we can provide live data straight into the broadcast stream. So this isn't pre-assembled, this is coming live out of our web services. Um, the data that gets put in by a human, um, we have a compliance workflow, so someone will create uh, all of these interesting facts about Brian Adams. Um, someone else will then comply and make sure that it doesn't contain the word Funk and stuff, which it probably doesn't if it's about Brian Adams. Um, <laughs> and, and I actually might do, but maybe in an effective way. Um, and then someone will, yeah, somebody in compliance will clear this and say this is ready for broadcast. Our playout systems will then make requests 
to Drupal and say, this is the video I'm playing at the moment. And then Drupal says, cool, I've got some stuff, interesting facts about this video. Um, we can also assemble uh, sort of sequential shows as well. So we can put things in sequence to say, this is the video. Uh, when this video plays, show this thing first, and then show something else, and then show something else. So we've got multiple events there spanning across maybe a half hour show. Um, so this is now running across nine channels, uh, pretty much all of our music channels in the UK. So VH1, MTV Bass, Hits, Dance, etc. Um, and we're currently looking at rolling this out in Australia and the rest of Europe as well. Maybe with a few upgrades to the Drupal 6 platform. Maybe even to Drupal 7. Also in 2011, we were quite busy. Um, so, I think we, we had a sort of a, a global initiative that uh, MTV sort of move out into other lifestyle things. MTV style um, was a sort of move in that direction. But we really, uh, yeah, it, it's a blog, it's a fairly simple blog. You know, I'm not gonna sort of make out that it's something amazing. Uh, but really for us, it was, uh, sort of testing our skills, testing Drupal 7, so I think this was the first Drupal 7 site that we'd built. Um, and moving more towards uh, responsive, or REST, I think as it's known, which is responsive and server-side components. Um, which, for those who don't know, um, it basically means you've got the same site that's delivering the same content uh, to everyone, uh, regardless of what they're device that they're on. Um, but the server side components means that we can actually sell up slightly different content uh, to different devices rather than just reformat it. Uh, an example might be um, if the user is on a mobile device and we don't have mobile rights to play videos, um, then we can restrict that content to mobile users. Um, we also do things as well like making sure we don't deliver enormous images that look, that look great on the desktop um, and then resells them down for mobile users on CSS, because that would just be silly. Um, so we will switch out for smaller assets, smaller versions of the same assets. Um, this was kind of a bit of an experiment really, um, just to see, partly to see you know, if we could move into style and the sort of fashion world, but also to sort of test out the technology. And, um, we didn't do it right first time, but um, we learned a lot from doing it. And from this point, we sort of decided that this is kind of our blueprint. Every site we build from now on will work across all platforms. The reason why became quite apparent about six months later when we started looking at our stats. Uh, so a quick snapshot from 2012 about our mobile audience share. Um, I don't know what it is now, it, probably about 50%, maybe more. I don't, I don't think we've quite tipped over the 50% mark yet. Um, our users are going mobile. Um, Facebook has said that, you know, they've got more users on mobile than they have on desktop. Uh, if our content's being shared on Facebook and our, the Facebook users on mobile and they click a link, they can see it on their mobile. It needs to work on a mobile. Um, <coughs> switching out to a mobile site is kind of, you know, it, it works for some people, you know, m.mtv.co.uk, that's what we have running at the moment. Um, it kind of works, but it means you've got an extra platform to support. And we're a team of sort of roughly between two and three people. We could do without having to support an extra platform. Not only that, we now support other brands. So we've gone from being MTV to Viacom International Media Networks. Um, we look after MTV, Comedy Central, and Nickelodeon. We also look after UK and Ireland, I'm trying to remember all my flags now, Israel, Hungary, Australia and Russia, and various other Central and Eastern European territories which are starting to come on board. So what this means for us is that this 
is sort of, these this are the sites that, that we support. Well, these are the main sites that we support. There are other little spin-offs here and there. So for a team of two or three people, it can get a little bit busy at times. Um, ongoing support uh, is, is tricky, but manageable, as long as no one wants anything new. Um, so these, well, the five sites at the top, four of those are Drupal sites. M.MTVKK is uh, um, the, the mobile specific site that's provided by a third party and we give them feeds that powers it. Everything else is uh, a little bit more difficult to support. Um, one of the challenges as well that comes with uh, being a tech team that supports multiple brands is when you have something that kind of crosses all of the boundaries. So Viva, for example, takes content from MTV, Comedy Central, and Nickelodeon. So having one platform per brand, which is a way that other parts of the business work, um, isn't really an option for us anymore, because our content needs to go across all the brands, um, which can be done. You know, you can repurpose your content, you can uh, copy and paste data from one CMS into another or into an XML document or whatever that particular platform uses to ingest its content, uh, but it's not ideal. Um, especially when you have a couple of sites running on Java and a few more sites running on .NET and a few more sites running on Grails, which is uh, an open source Java thing. It's Java. <laughs> so, um, obviously we realised we needed a few more people to be able to cover off all of this kind of tech. Um, going back to this, this, these sites don't have a CMS. These are XML docs that get edited by hand um, and uploaded and it's, yeah, it's legacy, we didn't build it. Please don't build this. Um, we needed to evolve a little bit um, to stop, you know, um, you can't have a team of three people on each, you know. Luckily, we're kind of multi-skilled, so some of us can help out on other platforms, you know. I can dive into a bit of .NET if I really need to. Um, if there's really no one else able to do it, I will do it, um, but I'd rather not. Um, I'd rather specialise, you know. Um, so how do we evolve? We standardise on Drupal, obviously. That goes about saying. But not only that, really, we standardise in the way we, that we build on Drupal. So all of the Drupal sites we have at the moment are, you know, there's, there's one on Drupal 5, there's a couple on Drupal 6, there's a couple on Drupal 7. Some of the code is shareable amongst some of them. Uh, some of it has to be had to be rewritten to sort of squeeze it into the new version of Drupal. Um, if you want to, <laughs> uh, the, the development process um, for maintaining those sites um, is just a, a nightmare. It's horrible. If you, if you want uh, a current version of the site, you have to check out the, uh, the entire code base for that particular version of Drupal and all of the custom code, and then sync the data down and build it on your own, you know, in your own dev environment, which is, is kind of okay, but it could be better. You know, I've, I've got better things to do than spend my time rebuilding websites um, just to add a couple of new features. One ring to rule them all. Um, so, obviously, Drupal kind of can do this, but really, it's, for us, it's more about uh, a mindset of how do we streamline all of our processes? How do we tap on the new European sites and support them um, and still be able to build new stuff while we're supporting all of the other sites? that we're doing. So this is the one ring as it looks in a kind of sort of diagram thing, but there's probably a couple of people that recognise this that help me put it together. Um, if, 
you really want to get tech, this is the, what all the servers look like. But I'll go back to this. So, <clears throat> where we're at now, um, which it would have been amazing to do a demo today, but it's just not quite ready yet. Um, uh, where we're at now is we have uh, this thing called NOAA, which is kind of a bit of an internal joke. Uh, international will have a platform called ARC, so we have NOAA, obviously. Um, so we, NOAA is, is really our, sort of our, our central content hub. Um, it's, I probably have some more details about this somewhere. No, actually. It was, I was putting these slides together quite late last night, and they may be in the wrong order. Um, I'll skip forward a little bit. So this for us really is sustainable development, and I'll go into the detail a little bit more in a sec, because developers don't like building websites. Uh, it, this is absolutely true. Most developers don't like building websites. It's boring. It takes so long to do. Um, and I, I, I've been doing this for 15 years now. And you find yourself writing the same code over and over and over and over again. And it just is so tedious. You know, uh, I, I, I never want to build another user login system, and obviously with Drupal I don't have to. But also, even just putting together a website is a little bit tedious, really. Because most of it becomes configuration, and developers don't really like doing configuration stuff, they'd rather be developing. So our front-end sites are built with uh, using, well, they're Drupal distributions and install profiles. So that what that means is uh, the whole site can be packaged up uh, into what's called a make file, or well, you have a make file, and then you uh, have your install profile. So you say, I want to install MTVK UK. So this sets up everything that you need. We use um, namespacing policies, so uh, users can be members of MTV UK, but not MTV Australia. Uh, or users can obviously be members uh, of all of the MTV sites, but not Nickelodeon. Um, users can see content in other namespaces, but they, if they don't have permission to edit that, they don't edit it. But they can clone it into their own namespace. And it comes across with all its dependencies. So when you have uh, South Park content that's created by Comedy Central, that could then be cloned into MTV and then used on MTV. It maintains the reference back to the original source. So you know where it came from, and when someone looks at that content, they have an audit trail of exactly all of the sites that this particular episode of South Park is being used on, even if those sites aren't directly under their control. Page layouts can also be deployable anywhere. So page layouts, uh, it, it, it became, <clears throat> it kind of serves two purposes really to do things like that. I'll skip to that, CSS can as well. Um, yeah, so it serves two purposes. Um, for developers it means you can spin up a sandbox uh, with no content in it whatsoever because it's run off an install profile. And then you can fill it with content, which is the same content that's on your live site, without having to sync the database back with all of the site config and try and amp it which stuff you want and don't want. So you can deploy your content back. You can build some layouts in your sandbox, and then those layouts can be pushed back into Noah, back into the central hub, to be then pushed out elsewhere. You know? um, it also means we have things, you know, uh, there's a global initiative in MTV called MTV Push, where we have uh, an artist that is being featured across all of our territories. Um, Typically, uh, someone in the international team in New York will create a bunch of assets for that, uh, stick it on a file server, and then everyone else will go in and copy the text from the Word documents and uh, put it into their CMS or XML files or whatever it is they're using to update their local site. Um, the local design teams will repurpose the assets and uh, do the design specifically for their thing, you know. The local development teams may have to build out a new section of their site to, ha to host, to house this new content. But doing something like this means you have your 
a central team, or anyone really doesn't need to be a central team, kind of sort of distributed content creators or producers. Someone can create a package, which is all of the content. So this month's MTV Push Artist is KEB. I think that was a recent one that we had, right. maybe a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, so someone can create, this is this month's MTV Push Artist. These are all the images. We have a gallery. Uh, we have a profile. We even have some new page, la page layouts for you, some new designs. They can package that up, stick it into Noah. That then becomes deployable everywhere across all of our sites, which is quite nice. For that whole process, you need zero developers, um, unless it breaks. Um, developers don't really like building websites. Um, doing day-to-day -day production on websites is kind of okay, but you'd rather not, you know. Um, your production teams like building websites, they like building beautiful pages, they like being able to change layouts without hassling developers. They don't like being told by a developer that you're going to have to wait till next week to change the layout of your site. And actually, even if we do change it, then we're not doing another build for another month. You know? Um, they like to be agile, they like to be able to push things out. Especially I mean, in, in a corporate, uh, a commercial environment. Um, if we've got a sponsorship that needs to, that's just been signed off at the last minute uh, and needs to go live first thing tomorrow, which obviously never happens, um, you need to know that you can push that out without keeping the developer up all night to rebuild the server for you or rebuild the site or even just to build the stuff. So what do we do instead once we've worked ourselves out of a job, once we've made ourselves entirely redundant? We build new components and features which everyone can use. Um, all of those things that you've been asking for for the last six months that we haven't had time to do because we've been busy supporting someone else's site or building someone else's whole website, we don't really have to do that anymore. Um, so we can build your cool stuff for you. We can focus on building... I thought I put something else in there. <laughs> uh, we can focus on building sort of reusable components that everyone can use, uh, rather than dealing with, you know, someone, say Comedy Central UK, uh, requests a new feature for their Java site, which then gets requested by Nickelodeon Australia on their .NET site, you know, um, we don't have to worry about that anymore. You can innovate, you can get back to tinkering around, plugging things into other bits and seeing what happens. Um, we can start really completing the feedback loop that we've been building over the last six, seven years, where we have broadcast systems starting to talk to each other, which can then sort of fit into the back office kind of compliance workflow stuff, uh, which can then feed stuff out to our mobile apps and fully responsive for any device sites, which can then push stuff back into the broadcast stream. That's it. Uploaded on Drupal. We Which one did you use? The, we use Zen. You use Zen. Yeah. So you use a su sub theme of Zen. Yes. Did you use that for your brand theme and the sub theme as well? How did you port it to the mobiles? Because Android and iOS have got specific type of theme um, uh, yeah. methodologies. So um, um, we, we have uh, underneath the brand hierarchy, we also have device hierarchy as well. So we'll have an MTV UK default for desktop, MTV UK mobile for mobile devices, MTV UK tablet for tablet devices. So you have dev device specific sub themes for brands as well. Right. Okay. And that's then provided you that, or did you have to create your own? Oh, uh, we created our own. But create yeah, I mean, it's really it's just bits of overrides and stuff. You know, all of our layouts are sort of managed by Drupal. Uh, sorry, by panels. Yeah. Do you use Panelizer? Or did you use for that? Uh, or did you just use? We really wanted to use Panelizer. Thank you. Um, 
And we did quite a few experiments with it, but ended up not using it at the end. I think it was there were a few issues that we ran into, particularly with. So one of the things I didn't really talk about there is that um, because all of our sites, you know, serve up different content to multiple devices, so everything sat behind Akamai. Uh, Sorry, what was that? Uh, 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 all, all of our sites are sat behind Akamai, so content delivery network. So everything's heavily cached. Um, we do device detection uh, at, the ca at the caching level uh, on the proxy servers. So if, if someone's a desktop user, uh, it will send a header back to Drupal to say this is a desktop user, same for tablet, same for mobile. It will then cache the response just for that type of device. So the same URL will actually be, we'll see three different versions of that URL in the cache depending on uh, what devices it's for. Um, panels will then, uh, we had a couple of uh, access plugins which look at, which look at the headers. Uh, and so panels, um, the page manager allows you to have variants. And you can, so a certain page can, you can use a slightly different version of a page depending on certain criteria. So say a news article layout can, you, you can set up a mobile variant and a tablet variant. Did you use rules, no, for that kind of thing, no? no. Did you didn't use rules? No, just uh, accessibility plugins. What, what, what workflow did you use? Did you, just, did you use a workflow methodology? Um, you know, did you? For content management? Yeah. Or? No, just for the development work, for the, develop, the development side. Um, oh, we've, we've had our own issue. <laughs> yeah. You didn't use features or, features or OG uh, modules, did you? Um, organic groups. Yeah. Um, we, we briefly looked at organic groups for doing the namespacing stuff, you know, for keeping our editorial users separate. Um, but it, it didn't quite work out for us because um, organic groups become a property of the content. Yeah, that's right. So when you deploy that content, the group gets deployed with it. Uh, and, uh, and, yeah, I mean, the, the, the namespace thing was, was, a, was a home group solution. Um, Another thing is uh, you did multilingual as well. You got multilingual site as well. Yeah, we've you used that the, API. Did you use the uh, we've got the the which is a multilingual site. So that's uh, English, German, Italian, French, Spanish. Are you we're going to let a couple of that? other people. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Sorry. Ask me some then, questions afterwards. And then you can talk no to worries. Paul yeah. as long as you want afterwards. So two more questions. And um, apart from anything on Google.org, do you share any informational code between anyone in your industry, or do you see a future in, in doing that at all? Um, I've got best practices. Yeah, I, 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 I used to work in radio a long time ago, and, and one of the, the, the sort of sayings we had in radio was um, agree on technology, compete on content, uh, which I think is a lovely thing to do. Um, and uh, I'm certainly very open to that. Um, MTV UK uh, are, are huge adopters of open source. Um, the rest of international is coming around to our way of thinking. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I would like to think that I, I, I mean, I'd be happy to share my code with anyone because we're not a software development company. So our code isn't isn't how we make our money. You know, we're 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 a media company. We create content. We want to deliver content in the most efficient way possible. Um, using the Drupal framework means that we have this amazing foundation that we can extend slightly to to incorporate our own business logic. So uh, I, I think a lot a lot of sort of companies get into this kind of mindset where it doesn't do exactly what we want. Therefore, we have to build exactly what we want from scratch, which is insane. Uh, especially when you have something like Drupal, you know, because it means that everyone becomes a software development company, and this isn't our speciality, you know. So, um, personally, I would love to share uh, as much of our code as possible. I'm sure when we finish the project, we're going to look at um, contributing some of our work back. We've already contributed some pack, and we'll certainly do a huge write-up of exactly how we built everything, um, because we think it's quite cool. Mark? I was wondering, instead of chaining your, your things, have you tried doing it just in SAS? Um, we haven't tried yet. SAS is quite new for us. I mean, I'm not a front end developer, so I'm, uh, I'm, gonna, um, I'm not going to claim to know about that. Um, SAS is something that we picked up fairly recently. Um, and 
I think Zen supports SAS very well. Um, there are probably other parts of the business that would prefer we did a pure SaaS approach, and I know that there are other parts of the business, um, certainly like domestic US, that, that would be doing these kind of things purely in SaaS. Um, but yeah, it's maybe in the future, you know, once we know SaaS better. <laughs> we don't know everything yet. We're making it up as we go along. If anyone hadn't noticed, but we're kind of doing okay at it, because Drupal's quite good like that. Or is that my time up? Uh, we're running a bit behind schedule, so we'll do one last question. Okay, cool. You, you talked about um, you, you do layouts and deployable entity panels. Yes. Is that just exporting the entire panel? So then you're exporting a variant content? Um, yeah, but yes, both. Uh, we, we, we have um, an exportable entities wrapper, which um, which, 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 yeah, it, it's, a, it's an entity which basically will take any exportable item and shift it around, you know, using, uh, basically use deploy module um, uh, to push all of our content around. Um, yeah, so we have a wrapper around CTOL's exportables to allow us to do that. All right, thank you very much. Thanks very much to Paul. Just a quick couple of questions. Uh, how many? Um, for those who don't know about Drupal theming, uh, themes are inheritable. So you can have a base theme. Most people probably would have a base theme. And then you can create a sub theme of that, which adds to the theme. Uh, and that handles all of your presentation layer kind of stuff. Um, so we have a global theme, which theoretically gives us a white label site. I'm not sure if it quite does yet, but it does theoretically, and it will do. Um, and then we have brand themes. So uh, the MGV theme is a child theme of Viacom International <coughs> Media Networks. So whereas the global theme will give us a white label site, the MGV theme will make it look like MTV, or Nickelodeon will make it look like Nickelodeon. And then we have a region sub theme of that. So if MTV Australia decide that they want to change a few things for them, but still keep the overall look and feel, they can do that. We're using, as I said, uh, RES, which is a responsive design and service our components, and SAS and Compass, which is sort of some quite nice uh, CSS frameworks uh, and compilers um, to, to try and speed up this process. Um, I'm not going to go too much into that because I don't do front end stuff. <laughs> But it's good. Um, pretty much all of our page layouts are built using drag and drop tools. Um, we've actually been doing this since about 2008 uh, when we started building that Drupal 5 MTV site um, uh, using the panels module for anyone who knows Drupal. Um, the version we're running is panels 2, beta 3 which got discontinued shortly after we started using it. Uh, but the new version is, is quite lovely. Um, so all of our page layouts are built using drag and drop tools, which means you don't really need developers to start building pages. Your producers can do this, your designers can do it, trusted editorial staff can do it. Not everyone. Um, and our layouts and custom CSS. So in addition to the, the site theme, we can also have custom CSS, which is, you know, changes for specific pages. You want to change the background color or uh, a sponsor header or something on one page. So our layouts and custom CSS are stored as deployable entities, which means they can be pushed into NOAA, our central deployment hub. Uh, the content created here is platform agnostic and can be deployed anywhere using RESTful web services. <coughs> so this means we have one content admin system for all of our brands, all of our sites. Um, we use um, namespacing policies, so uh, users can be members of MTV UK, but not MTV Australia. 